everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 58 of Daryl20's Let's Play series. Uh, where today, time to get some lithium going. Um, the main reason uh, is that I would like to have a bigger battery store for um, all the energy that we're producing from our nuclear reactor, right? The little tiny battery we have working right now, eh, it's alright. It's not great. It's not terrible. Um, but a nuclear reactor can produce so much power, we need a really large battery to handle all that power. Now, the downside with these is they get very expensive very quickly, so I probably won't go for a max size battery just yet. Uh, but we will kind of get the ball rolling. So let's start with um, what we need to get. So ultimately we need uh, a bunch of induction stuff. Uh, induction casings and induction ports and induction cells and induction providers, which just form a giant multi-block battery. Um, casings go on the walls, ports allow RF to come in and out, uh, cells store battery power and providers input and output battery power. So the better and more providers you have, the more RF per tick you can transfer, whereas the better and more induction cells you have, the more RF you can store in total. An ultimate cell can hold about a trillion RF and an ultimate induction provider can transfer 52 million RF per tick. So these two, just even one of them is usually pretty darn good, to be honest with you. They are also exceedingly expensive because each um, purple one requires four blue ones, which requires four red ones, which requires four. So like you can see it very quickly uh, generates a lot of, of numbers that get really big. So let's start off with what we're going to do here. So what I'm going to do, I think it's four, if I remember correctly. It's been a little while since I built one of these, so... So that's going to be one there. Let's make it two and two. So if I did this, this would be cool, right? I am making thermal evaporation blocks, which will effectively get me lithium. Okay. So to get lithium, uh, we're going to need this. We're going to need an input. And you guys have, a lot of you at least, have seen me make many of these before. So I'm not going to go too crazy with it. That should be cool. Nice little controller here. Basically, the bigger you make this, the the more uh, quickly the multi-block can function. And there's two ways to make them. You can either generate your heat manually with a block called the resistive heater. That will take RF and produce heat, and the heat will produce the stuff we need. Um, alternately, you can throw solar panels on this thing, but solar panels, as you can probably guess, require a direct line of sight to the sky, which we don't have in a compact machine, so that ain't gonna happen. And let me get maybe, what are these called again? Thermal? Let me get like 30 or so more of them, 40, sure, why not? Looking good there. I'm just gonna get these built up a little bit uh, again, the bigger the better. I'm sure there's a limit off the top of my head. I don't know what it is. But we're not going to go too crazy with these because we're not going to need a ton of... Well, we do want a decent amount of lithium, but realistically, once it starts producing, we should be fine. Okay? So if we look in here, we can see thermal evaporation plant. There is an input on the left and an output on the right, and we give it some heat, and that's all there is to it. It's super simple. Super easy. Um... So it starts off with, you need water, and you'll get brine. So if we look up the recipe for brine, for some reason that doesn't want to work, but that's okay, we'll look it up this way. Liquid lithium, uh, lithium comes from liquid lithium. Uh, liquid lithium comes from evaporating brine. Brine comes from evaporating any water. Cool? So, super simple. Let's get some ultimate uh, mechanical pipes. Sure. Boom. So now you're getting water. Uh, the heat you can put in via a thermal evaporation valve. So I'll throw down a resistive heater here. And there's like a side to this that you want to do. Let's see, get you on the network. I can put you in rotate mode. That would probably help. Yeah, there you go. That works too. Configurator. Okay. So now we're cooking. You can specify how much RF per tick. 
uh, to, to put in this thing. So I'm just going to do like 400. Does that sound? Make it a number up. Doesn't matter. Uh, the higher the RF per tick, the more heat it will generate. And then this guy will start building up his heat internally. And you can see the water is turning into brine. And then we can pipe that brine out. And similarly, the brine will turn into liquid lithium. Easy peasy. Nothing to it. And then uh, we're going to need a rotary condensator and a chemical crystallizer. So you're going to go there and you're going to go there. So you will accept, uh, so you've got the liquid version coming in, right? So fluids will be input on the top and then gases will be output on the right as an auto output. And that should be super easy once we get a little bit of power going on. So that's where this guy's going to come into play with our universal cables. Cool. And we just want to toggle the operation to the left so that it's liquid lithium turning into lithium gas. Or, yeah. And then lithium gas will chemically crystallize into lithium powder. And that should be cool. Super easy, right? They're, they're not bad to set up. I've done it like a million times though. So <laughs> A, I went through it quickly, but B also like, I just remember exactly how to build them because they're they're not bad. Uh, back in the day, I used to have to like look it up because it's very weird to have like a four by four base and I'd always, I always forgot that number. Uh, so now if you want some mechanism upgrades, you can get some of them, no problem. Energy and gas upgrades sound like a good time to me. So boom and boom, boom and boom. And now you're quickly producing lithium dust. And what I'll probably do is throw an ender chest in here. And this is really just generating, is, is just costing RF, right? Everything is self-contained, it works fine. So there's no reason to not let it run infinitely. So what I'm gonna do, um, actually, let me go back in there. What I want is a little bit of that lithium first so I can stage my drawer because I'm going to go put a drawer with a void upgrade and then this thing will just constantly uh, produce what I want it to produce. Cool. Uh, so how about from functional, we're going to get one of you and one of you. Cool. So now if we look this up, we should see there's 14 lithium. Perfect. And if we configure you um, for item output to the top, eject on, that should be pretty cool. There we go, lithium for days, ish. Now, if you wanna play with things, you absolutely can. Like you can, you know, bump up the numbers on stuff. As you can see, the, the, the heat here is building up, so the temperature is getting nice and hot. Um, again, the more RF attack you pump into your resistive heater, the hotter these things will get. So really, just make this a bigger number and you'll get faster conversion. But also uh, note that it takes a while for the thermal evaporation plant to heat up. You'll see I had set it to 400 a while ago and it was at 300K, now it's at 900K. So it's getting there. Eventually it'll stabilize and just be at the temperature that it needs to be at. And it'll stay at that temperature until such time that we either run out of power and it starts going down or we change this number and it changes to match. Uh, so that's it. Easy peasy lithium production. Booyah. So now with lithium up and running, we can go teach this guy a nice little induction smelter recipe. Now we're probably going to need some more patterns. And I always do this roughly. Every time I move my pattern from up here down here, I make a new batch so that they're ready for next time I need them. Okay. So induction smelters are cool. We're gonna do this. We're gonna need a bunch of patterns for this, really. Uh, we're gonna need an induction port. We're gonna need the basic cell. And we're gonna need energy cube. And then we're gonna need the advanced cell. And then we're gonna need energy cube. And then we're going to need the elite cell. And then we're going to need energy cube. See the pattern? And then we're going to need uh, the ultimate cell. And then we're going to need the energy cube. So that's step one. 
We'll just give this a good old rundown over here. And now that we've got that all put together, we can do the same thing for the providers. Cool. And we already know the energy cells, so we don't have to teach those again. So that's nice, at least. Okay. So now with you guys good and good, look at that, exactly four slots for them. Love when something like that. It's such a little thing, but it's super cool. Now, remember I said these were pretty expensive at the top tier? I wasn't kidding. If you want to get this, um, you are apparently missing some resources that you know how to make. Stop telling me you don't have them. You do have them. What's all this about? Didn't I teach you those things? This guy is in substitutions enabled mode, right? Uh, so you're saying elite energy cubes you don't know how to make? I would disagree. They are right here. Elite. Oh, that's weird. It did it with a, with a thing. That's weird. Huh, why did it do that? That's weird, right? Isn't that a little weird? Why did that happen? Let's try that again. Uh, so now ultimate doohickey. We are missing advanced induction cells. Advanced induction cells. That would be you, right? Energy cube, let's make sure it's the empty one that goes in there. How's that sound? Maybe that'll be better. It's possible. That's, that's, that might be what's up. Okay, because there is a partially full one in there. So maybe that's why it was getting confused. All right, so let's try that. Induction, if I want the top tier now, you should be, yeah, now we're cooking, missing ingredients. So we're gonna need 121-ish glass, 164, that doesn't seem so bad, right? Uh, we're going to need 1,746 iron, a similar number of gold, a healthy amount of osmium. Amethyst shards? What are amethyst shards used for in this recipe? I don't even know. What are amethyst shards used for? That's an exceptional question. What are amethyst shards used for in this recipe? Uh... What are amethyst shards doing? I don't remember amethyst shards being part of any of these recipes. How are there amethyst shards involved? Anyone? Where do they come from? Uh, unless there's something else here that I don't know. Did something change recipe-wise? I don't remember there being amethyst shards involved in this process. Wow, look how much redstone we need. See what I mean by a stupid amount of resources? So I'm questioning if I need to be that bananas with it, right? Because while we do have the capability to do that, um, it's probably going to be a little bit of a burden on our resources at the moment. Let's go check on our miner dude and see what he's up to. And also see if he needs to be repaired, because it's been a while since we checked on him, right? Doo -doo -doo -doo. How you doing, buddy? Everybody's good over here? Wow, you guys are behaving. Well, you were behaving. Have you not been behaving? Are you behaving now because I showed up? I think the answer to that is no. Are you not transferring anything that's not on the whitelist? It seems that's the case. You're the one who should be. Mr. Transporter. You know what? I bet he's. I know what his problem is. If I did that, would that be cool? What in fact, are you doing? 
Are you being weird? These guys get a little bit stuck. Sometimes. There you go. Now we're cooking. Cooking, cooking, cooking. See, every now and then his pathfinding gets a little bit stuck. That's the trouble with entities. They get stuck on their pathfinding every now and then. Okay. Just wanted to make sure you guys are all behaving down here. I do every now and then between episodes, I will pop down, check on the durability of this thing, and repair it as needed. That's something I've been kind of doing a little bit on my own. Okay. So with that said, we now have lithium, we have the induction stuff. Do I want to go top tier induction? I mean, technically we could afford it. I mean, what else are we going to spend all these resources on, right? Uh, we're a little short on glass and we're waiting on some more lithium dust, but that won't be too big of a deal. Still want to know where amethyst is coming in at. Like what? Who needs amethyst? 20, 222 tinted glass. Somebody got a tinted glass recipe. That's what happened. Somebody got a tinted glass recipe. Who got a tinted glass recipe? That's what I thought it might be. Tinted glass. Who did that? Can I search? No. All right, let me come back after I figure out what's up with that. Figured it out, it was the steel casing. I knew it would have to be something like that. So let me kick off one of these crafts, and I'll surprise you in a minute with which one I decided to go with. But I think what I'll do is start with the Elite tier, because they're not too expensive. And remember, we can always upgrade this later, right? So that's an induction provider. Let's get an Elite induction cell as well. That's going to need a little bit more lithium. This is going to take a while to craft, so I'm going to come back when it's all done. And I'm not sure if we need to chunk load the chunk that we're in in here i know in previous versions of compact machines if the outer chunk was chunk loaded the in the one inside the machine would be two but i feel like i'm not getting lithium as much as i should be at this point so i think we might need to chunk load this so i did and i'm pretty sure i can take accelerate these things right pretty sure looks good to me cool all right, so we should have a little bit of a nice bit of battery power going on here. Now, my question is, should I replace my reactor with the induction cell? Because we're this guy is producing a thousand RF per tick. That guy over there is producing like a ridiculously stupid amount of RF per tick. I forget the number. It's been a while, but you know the you know the deal. It's a lot. It's a lot, right? It's a lot. So. What I'm going to say is, let's just replace it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we don't need it. We don't need we don't need this nuclear reactor. Let's just let's just break this nuclear reactor. Just just break right into it. You know, spill out all the nuclearness. Now to be clear, we could have absolutely made a really powerful extreme reactor that would produce lots and lots of RF per tick. So, if you want to go that route, you can. Um, but the main reason I wanted to go mechanism is I knew I was going to want polonium and plutonium at some point, uh, which I still need to. Did I ever? Did I ever set that up? I don't think I've set that up yet. So I want to get the. I want to get this going, and then we'll set that up. Deal. For me. Cool. Do, 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 do. So put away all this junk, put away all this junk, and now we're good to go. So let's set up our induction smelter here. Uh, this should be relatively easy. So I decide to, that is cool. So I'm gonna go like, just stick it right in the corner here and I'm gonna make it, uh, remember it's a multi-block structure. What I decided I'm gonna go with is you and you. Pretty sure it can be any you know cuboidish shape. Um, so I, I'm, I'm going to have two spots in the middle: one for an elite induction cell and one for an elite induction provider. And then by doing this, he should form into a multi-block, and we should be cool. So you'll note 
due to the fact that we have one cell and one provider, uh, we can transfer, because of the provider, 6.5 million RF per tick. So that's our transfer rate. So we can't do any more or you know than that. Um, and then our storage is 204 billion RF per tick, or RF storage. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, now we can absolutely make this larger and put more cells in there. We can replace those blues with purples and get the ultimate tier. Lots of different approaches that we could go with. Uh, you know, we'll figure it out. So now what I wanna do is change up how this thing works. What I will probably do is break you, and I'm gonna change you to be the direwolf network, okay? So you're going to receive energy on the direwolf network. You're not gonna send energy anywhere, okay? Because I always want the cell to be full. And then down here, I would like you to plug, I want you to uh, output energy. So you're gonna be a output mode. You're gonna output to the Dial 20 network, okay? And then I would like you to flux point. What do I not have points in here? Oh, I bet we're out of power. Yeah, I bet I did that, didn't I? I bet we are out of power. Uh, do I have a point? Where is my point? Shouldn't there have been a point? Oh, that's right, I replaced you. Uh, so then let's borrow you for a sec. I will turn you into the point for this guy. And you're going to go on the generators network, right? So he should be getting energy from the generators network and sending the energy out to the Dial 20 network. And that's all there is to it. And now we should have this guy again. Should be back up on online. We don't need this plug no mores for now. And you can be on the Darwell 20s network. So that'll keep you full at all times. So that if I need, you know, to quickly charge something or whatever use I might have for that energy cell. Sometimes I get rid of the energy cell there. Sometimes I like to keep it. It's kind of whatever. So now you're good to go, right? And we're storing all the energy from our nuclear reactor. Now at some point, and it won't be long, but at some point, and it already happened, we drained all the steam that we had backlogged. So remember, we had this running for a while. It produced a bunch of steam. The steam all backstuffed. Now all that steam has been consumed. It is no longer producing power. And now we have an internal buffer that we are emptying. Okay? So that's definitely a thing. Cool? Okay. So I did. I never did quite do this bit. Should I? Yeah, I can do this at this point, I think. So you're gonna be on the generators network with a low priority, which means that when this reactor is running, because we always want the reactor running and producing uh, polonium and plutonium, right? That's the goal. So by setting that up, we will make sure that all our energy from the industrial turbine will go to our big induction cell first. And then when the induction cell is full, it will start voiding the energy into the trash can, which I'm 100% cool with. Now, it's going to take a while because we just we just stored a billion RF in here and we're only like, you know, less than 1% full. So we got a while ago. Uh, let's now let's now handle our polonium and plutonium processing. I think that's probably a good bet, right? So that's where you guys are going to come in. All right, so let's get ready to set up polonium and plutonium. So just like other uh, nuclear waste products, these things will cause a nuclear incident, which means your chunks will be corrupted in a bad way. Uh, well, not like corrupted, but like you'll have nuclear waste around and it'll hurt you to go there. And over time, the nuclear waste will decay and will become safe again. But basically the only way to solve the problem is to wait or uh, use an admin command that you have to turn on cheats mode for. So be careful when you're messing with this stuff. But the, the, the gist is uh, we're going to want, uh, from mechanism, uh, we're going to want some tubes, right? Pressurized tubes. Let me get like 20-ish of those. That should be a good start. And we'll see if that's cool. And what we want to get is polonium pellets, which are uh, fluorite dust, polonium, and any water. We also want plutonium pellets, which are fluorite dust, plutonium, and any water. Um, so plutonium and polonium, I'm going to do that in the opposite order, though, to match what I kind of have here. So polonium here, plutonium here, right? So polonium comes from nuclear waste in a solar neutron activator. 
plutonium comes from nuclear waste and isotropic centrifuge. What I usually do is set these two machines up next to each other such that there's a lever in between, okay? And I will be able to toggle on and off which machine is running based on flipping the lever. So like, for example, if I set you, I'm gonna say uh, redstone detection inverted, right? So lever off means isotropic centrifuge run. This guy, redstone detection normal, lever on means solar neutron run, right? So off, you're running, on, you're turned off, you're turned on, you're turned off, you're turned on. Easy peasy, cool. And um, I've got the gas side configured such that gases will come in the bottom and they will output out the front. So that should be easy. Uh, and the same deal for this one, okay? Gases output out the front. So they'll automatically eject into this guy. Now for you gases, uh, let's make sure that you're uh, inputting in the back and outputting out the bottom. And same for you, for gases, okay? Um, you can be input, output. So that should be cool. Now, I'm gonna have gases go out the bottom of here. They're coming in the back. They're gonna dump their items. You are going to eject items out on the right. And you're going to eject items out on the left. And the reason for that is I'm gonna place That's not where I was looking. Not even a little bit where I was looking. I was looking here. Uh, that's what I'm going to do, right? So now there's three more things I need to get into this guy. We need to get water in, and we need to get fluoride in, and we need to get energy in. Those are all going to handle uh, by laser I.O. going in the top, okay? So right here and here, you're going to insert all three of those items all at once. So on the top side, you're going to input items, you're going to input energy, and you're going to input fluids. And the same deal here, you're going to input items, energy, and fluids from the top. Cool? So on this side, you will get energy going in. You will get energy going in. You will get uh, water going in. You will get water going in. And then you will get items going in. Yep. And you will get items going in. Cool? And then we just need some kind of fluorite processing. But if I remember correctly, I have fluorite coming in over here, don't I? Do I have fluorite coming in here? I do. Hooray. So we could get some kind of, uh, what we need is fluorite dust, right? And that's just a crusher, I assume. Yep. You never know. Sometimes it's an enrichment chamber. So you got to look it up. Okay. So crusher, boom, boom, boom. That'll be a sec because I'm going to need buckets of lava for crushers. Not the end of the world. I can totally do that. One, two. And now, Crusher, ready to roll. Okay. So you can chill here, Mr. Crusher. I'll just give you like a little bit of spacing. Okay. And you will, let's make it so that you guys are inserting on orange. Let's make it, let's make it, let's make it purple, right? Purple and purple, magenta, whatever, whatever number two is. And then on the, on the down here, you're going to extract on purple and you're going to insert on orange. Okay. So that should be good. And then your sidedness for items will be input and output on the top. And then you'll also do energy for me. Cool. Okay. Did any of you guys have energy? I feel like the answer is no. But that's okay. We'll make energy happen with flux. Okay. You can pop there. And then on the up, you will be an extract of energy. And I should probably overclock you to 100,000 Arfa Tech. Cool. So now you should be getting juice. And then once we laser wrench you guys up, boom, 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 boom. Now you're happy and happy with power. Cool. Excellent. Good, good, good. Uh, now on the down here, you've got this happening, right, on white. And you're extracting stuff. So how about we just make the insert for this guy white? Uh, but we can filter him to fluorite. That way, if I do this and that, we are now connected and fluorite's happening. 
Sweet. Uh, and I should probably get, you know, another 32 of these crafted and another 32 of these crafted. Because we know we're going to need some stuff, right? Okay. And if I wanted to, I could round robin this, but I don't think it's necessary. Because generally one machine will be running at a time, right? So he should now automatically be extracting. He's going to probably fill the closest one first, because that's how laser IO works. It's priority and then nearest first. So it looks for the, the shortest distance uh, and, and puts the one into the closest location. So that's cool. Okay. So everybody's good? Answer yes. Let's have you extracting water here. Um, so what I could do is have just a laser node here. And then the opposite side of you would be north. You can extract water and just connect these guys. And now you should be getting water over here. Aha! See? See all the little particles flowing? And again, nearest first. It won't round robin it. So eventually it'll fill up the one and it'll start filling up the second. Cool? Okay. So now you're getting the fluoride that you need. The other one's going to get his fluorite that he needs now. Hooray! Okay. Uh, and then you're going to export that, and you've got energy, and you're good, and I think everything's done here. So now, all we need to do is start running. I probably didn't want to do that, but realistically, I want this to be this, right? Yep. And then the lever can go here. Okay. So now what we want to do is handle this bit. So you're going to be a basic pressurized tube coming in here. Okay. And then we're going to build our way over to you. So I'd like you to go straight down from here and figure out where we are. Okay. That's not too bad. I can make this work. Do I have more tubes? I do. Okay, we're going to be very careful with this, because remember, if we break these pipes while there's waste in them, bad things will occur. So keep that in mind. Okay? Be very careful with nuclear waste. I've done it many times. You guys have seen me make mistakes all the time. And then I have to sit around and wait for the nuclear waste to decay, which is, you know, not fun. Not fun. So trust me, you don't want to make this a mistake. Um, so you're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. Now the solar neutron activator, we have to figure out sunlight. Uh, what I'm thinking I was going to do is just straight up clear above it. So where's my mining laser? What I can do is a range of one. And this is a fun way to mine. You like that? Is that cool? That works, right? Now, it is being very friendly and putting uh, lights down for me. So I'm going to want to break those. I don't think that they would block the sunlight coming in. They shouldn't. But let's make sure there's a clear line of skylight. So that should be cool. And then you're good to go. Right? So now you should be receiving sunlight, assuming it's daytime, which I don't think it is. So let me get my backpack or my sleeping bag here. See? Yeah, 100% not daytime. Otherwise, let me sleep. Cool. All right, now you guys should be good to go. So if I connect you up, boop, see how it automatically starts outputting? So your nuclear waste auto outputs, and then you're done. Cool. So now you started doing what? You got nuclear waste. You got nuclear waste. And are either of you running? Your detection is normal. Your detection is inverted. So you guys are out of power. Yeah, that's right. You guys need power too, don't you? Well, this guy needs power. This guy doesn't. So I can flip this lever. Oh, look, they have a little cool laser. How cool is that? I like it. I like it. Cool. And now you're producing polonium for me. Awesome. See, polonium is being made. Now, if we want plutonium to happen, we're going to need some kind of power. And uh, the only thing I can think of is to obviously 
put a laser node here. And on the opposite side of this, which is west, we should have some energy cards. Bing, bang, boom. Energy in. Oh my, that's where it connects to, huh? Cool. Laser. And boom. And this is a dire lasery mess, right? So with this lever flipped, you are now making polonium. And you'll notice that all of our nuclear waste has been processed, which is great. Okay. But the polonium has gotten stuck here. Why is that? Well, in addition to nuclear waste, there's spent nuclear waste, which you need to handle. Um, so if I flip this lever, this guy should be allowed to run now. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, and he can also get upgrades, by the way. In fact, a lot of these machines can. I'm pretty sure they can't get gas upgrades, though, right? Pretty sure none of them accept gas upgrades. No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. So now you made... Uh, and, and what we should have in here is plutonium. We have a little bit. And polonium. We have a little bit. Not too shabby. Now, for this spent nuclear waste, we're going to do something very similar. Uh, but what we're going to need is radioactive... Uh, waste barrels, which is a combination of steel and lead. And it's four steel per barrel. So how about for steel, I get um, 128-ish. And we'll be back in a sec when that crafts. And that should get me 32 radioactive waste barrels. So the way these things work is pretty straightforward. Um, now the thing to pay super close attention to is that we don't allow these two things to connect. Now, the good news is that these pipes should be completely empty now because my reactor is not running. So here's how we're gonna handle this, okay? We are going to allow them to connect and then make sure we disconnect them after we place the cables. If you have your reactor running, turn it off for this setup or place your, 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 your pipes in such a way that they won't connect, okay? But the gist is as soon as we connect this, you know, actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the gas output Where's my gases? Let's turn you off on the bottom. That would be a cool trick too. That's the other way you could do this. We could do it. We could just turn this off on the bottom. So now see how they're connecting, but it's not connecting to the bottom. So what you want to do is make sure that the tubes here do not connect. And you'll see that there's some green particle effects. That means, you know, nuclear, nuclear bad things are there. Um, so then you're going to go here, and you're going to go here, and you're going to connect there. And then you can connect and run into some kind of nuclear storage facility. And this is where we're going to hold our nuclear waste. So let's get you ready. I'm going to set you back to a 3x3 three three mode. And what we will want is effectively... A nice little storage area. Does that sound cool? If I got four more of those, that might be neat. So let's get a little bit more steel. That's enough for five, I think. And you can kind of place as many as you want. Now here's the deal. The pipes should load balance to the different storage blocks uh, if we place them correctly. Now, because we were smart and didn't allow any nuclear waste to flow through here, we can break these pipes. As a reminder, if you are less than smart, like I usually am, then what's gonna happen is if you break those pipes with that waste in there, bad things, right? So trust me, don't do that. All right, let's get uh, let's do it to 40. 40 should be a nice number. And it should be quick. In theory. There we go. Okay, so when we allow this stuff to flow in here, it will uh, automatically distribute. So it'll, it'll you know, spread, spread it all across. It's not nearest first. It's, it's going to evenly distribute, which will be good for us. And if you shift right click with an empty hand, you'll see that there's no gas stored. The way these radioactive waste barrels work is that you pump your nuclear waste in there and then every second or two, a little bit of the waste gets voided. So it's very slow. 
So the more radioactive waste barrels you have, the more waste you can void per period of time. So if you're not keeping up with your waste production, place down more barrels. That's all there is to it. So now if we come over here and we say that gases on the down is an output, he will drain all his gas. It will all go into all these and you'll see that they're all relatively about the same. See how they're all about the same? And now more waste is getting created by this bad boy. Uh, every time he runs, he's producing a little bit more nuclear waste and it's filling up the dudes. So give it a little bit of time and see what happens, right? And then the same for here, uh, on side config, we can do gases, output bottom, and now you should also be cool, okay? So your, 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 your goal here is to make sure that you're avoiding more nuclear waste than you're producing. So far, that doesn't seem to be the case for me, as we can see by the fact that the nuclear waste number is going up, right? Um, so up to you. Um, we'll, we'll have to keep an eye on this is really what's, what the deal is, all right? So for now, I think it's a good wrapping up point for the episode. So let's do that. So let's wrap up here. We'll come back next time. I might put more barrels down here because um, clearly we're not keeping up. We have a net gain of nuclear waste going on. You're going to want a healthy amount of barrels. Uh, that's that's my recommendation to you. That's just that's just the way it works. You're going to want a, a decent amount of barrels going on there. Okay. So I'll probably just put more down here uh, in between episodes and just add more pipes. And eventually it'll avoid it all. Now... Now, granted, one other note is that we did have a decent backlog of polonium to clear out. So it's possible that once I turn the reactor on, he will produce, and we should test this. Maybe that's what I'll do. We'll test it to make sure. But once the reactor is running, he's only producing, you know, a certain amount of waste per tick. Um, we had a backlog we were clearing through. So it's possible that we were producing more than we really uh, were, were going to produce. So we'll see what happens. Cool. But for now, we'll just let all this void. You know, we can turn it on now and find out. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go back up here. And we're going to flip lever. And now you're producing nuclear waste. And you will slowly but surely fill you up. Now, the thing is, we're going to be filling up both of these, right? So this guy's running at the moment. I really want polonium more so than plutonium. So I'm going to flip the lever such that you're processing and you're not. Now... This is going to back stuff in nuclear waste. So right now we're splitting our nuclear waste production in half. So we're effectively producing twice as much. And also because it's nighttime, you're not running. So now the good news is, is at night he doesn't run. So we're going to be voiding our nuclear waste. So I'll let this run for a little bit between episodes. But for now, wrapping up points. So down with points, sign off. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Let's come back next time and get back into pneumatic craft. Does that sound cool? For now, take it easy.